The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was open, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. What then will this child be? Who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Our readings today on this solemnity of the birth of John the Baptist speak very much to the theme of identity and vocation. And these are some of the biggest and most distressing questions that we can ask in our life. What is my purpose? Why am I here? When I die, what do I, what should I be able to say that I accomplished? How am I to leave the world a better place? I don't want to get to the end of my life and go before the Lord and the Lord say, well, you know, you did okay. But uh, I was really hoping that you would have followed my promptings for this. It's like, no, Lord, Lord, I want to do your will. I want to know your will. I want to know who I am in your eyes. Zechariah doubted and was made mute as a consequence. Until the day that he was able to profess in faith, His name is John. I believe in where he came from. I believe in who he is. I surrender my plans for family and for my children to the Lord, to his purposes, in the vocation God has called my son to. And his tongue was freed and he spoke, blessing God. There are many in our current day who think that they will be more free if they can define their own person, define their own identity, and make their own plan for their life according to what they believe will bring them happiness and fulfillment. But my friends, we are being silenced. We don't know who we are. We don't know why we're here. And we are paralyzed as a consequence. We don't even know if we're male or female. So therefore, we are even silenced to say, ma'am or sir. We are now free to use any pronoun under the sun And tomorrow there will be more. But that's not freedom. When we are not free to engage each other openly, 
according to who we are in God's eyes. With, we must be with the greatest compassion of those who struggle with their identity. But like John the Baptist, who had a difficult vocation and suffered much for it, with great compassion and courage, we must preach the truth in love. When people are asking, who am I? What is, who and what will this child be? We can help ourselves and others understand you are a beloved child of God. You are a beloved son or daughter of God. And you have a purpose. And your purpose is fulfilled in knowing Jesus, in living for Jesus, which includes living faithfully to Jesus' command, and making Jesus known by others, that others may know him and follow him and be faithful to him. That is your purpose. And you are not more free to put that on hold and see if you can find a better way yourself. I don't think Jesus' ministry would have been better had he started to go, huh, you know, the devil said, if you are the Son of God, well, you know, maybe I should stop and think about that. Maybe I'm not the Son of God. Or if John the Baptist were to stop and say, well, I don't know, maybe I'm not called to be the forerunner. Or if we were to stop and, again, ask, go back to the drawing board and say, I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'm not called to be a Christian. Whatever the case may be, we will be more free when we live according to the truth. We may not know ourselves, but we can take courage that God knows us. God has created us. God has given us a calling and a vocation to truth and to love. A vocation to be a disciple and to be an apostle. And when we do not know who we, who we are, we are paralyzed, like Zechariah was silenced. Let us pray that we may live in the truth that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are beloved sons and daughters of God, and with compassion and courage, let us help a world that has forgotten who we are and why we are here to know who we are. John the Baptist was called from the first moment of his life to announce the coming of the light to the nations, the hope of the world. In the joy of this feast, let us make our prayers to God, that the church may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the message of salvation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. That the leaders of nations may be instruments of truth and justice and lead their people in the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. That the poor and the suffering may take fresh heart in the promise of Christ's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may come to that end to which our faith looks, the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for any who are struggling in their identity this day, that they may have the confidence in the love of God of who created them and who has called them to follow him. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lamb of God may take away the sins of the faithful departed. And especially today, we pray for the repose of John Pankhurst. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of time and eternity, you search our hearts and discern our needs before we ask. Aided by St. John the Baptist, in your mercy, hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. 